everybody, talking today about what you can expect from Windows 10 version 2004. Ed Bot's here with us uh, to talk about it a little bit, and Ed, and it, it just seems odd to be saying 2004, considering that was years ago. It seems like we should have something a little more updated in terms of the name. Yeah, you know, that's we, we saw this one coming uh, a, a year or two ago when Microsoft started its new naming convention for these uh, Windows 10 feature updates. They, they do a four digit number for them and the first two digits are the year and the second two digits are the month. So 2004 is 2020, the fourth month and that's April. Um, but you're right, it's confusing and I think it's going to be even more confusing when we get to fall uh, this year, we have uh, either 2009 or 2010, whichever one they decide to do there. Um, we're going to feel like we're still uh, back in the last century. But uh, this is the, the latest feature update. It's coming in the next, you know, coming, coming soon. Um, it's an optional update for anyone who's installed either of the 2019 feature updates already. So whereas in the past, Microsoft pushed these out there and they installed themselves automatically on your PC, ready or not, uh, these ones are going to show up as an optional update. Um, the interesting thing about version 2004 is that it's been in preview for a very long time. It's been that Windows insiders have been working for, with it for almost a year now. Um, and you know, that's, it's been basically finished for several months uh, as they get ready uh, for the final release. I think, you know, some of that just has to do with quality control. Uh, you know, they had a really, really uh, awkward, bad, buggy release back at the end of 2018. And, uh, and so it seems like they're bending over backwards to make sure that this one goes smoothly. There isn't, there's a lot of new features in this, uh, nothing earth shattering, nothing here that's going to make people say, who moved my cheese? Um, and in fact, some of them are, some of the features are already in the new build. There's things that are delivered through apps like uh, the brand new calculator app and some changes to the way that search works in File Explorer. Those things are already there. But uh, you know, today, I think what we're gonna talk about is uh, some of the new features that will be there when people install this new update. Yeah, and and you know one uh, you know group Ed, of course that will will see some changes uh, and this will impact or be administrators. So talk a little bit about because I know you mentioned it in your article uh, what this will mean for them. Yeah, sure. There's a couple of really important changes here uh, that administrators will find uh, useful for their users. Uh, the first is that uh, you can sign in. If you, if you sign into your Windows 10 PC with a Microsoft account, you can set it up to go completely passwordless. Uh, you have to have Windows Hello enabled on that, which means you either need biometric authentication or a PIN setup. Uh, but this option just removes the, the necessity for you to type in a password. Um, and paradoxically, that adds security to the system uh, because it, it's, uh, it's impossible to steal a local PIN. Um, there's also the option to use that pin in safe mode. You know, when you start up, when you're an administrator, you're troubleshooting a PC, you're trying to figure out what's wrong with it, and you start in safe mode, uh, you have to sign in with the password of an administrator account now. Well, this version will allow you to configure Windows such that you can sign into safe mode. And when you do that, uh, you can just use your administrator's pin uh, to sign in. So that makes it a little easier uh, for troubleshooting purposes. Um, and finally, there's a really interesting option uh, that's an extension of something that's been there since the very earliest days of Windows 10. And that's in the option to reset a PC instead of using the files that are already on the PC, which might be corrupted or you know, there might be another sort of problem with them. Uh, beginning with this version, you'll have the option to download those reset files directly from, uh, from the cloud, from Microsoft. Uh, and so that's something that people have been asking for for a while. It's something that Mac users are familiar with, um, but uh, that's going to be new in this release. Excellent. Uh, and another you know, big group, Ed, that uh, you talk about, uh, the developers will be especially interested too to see what's in it for them. Right, uh, so there's two fairly major changes in, uh, in this version that will be of, of big interest to developers and people who are testing software. Uh, first of those is Windows Subsystem for Linux version two. 
Um, in this one, we don't have enough time to go into all the detail about it here, but this is a major update to uh, the system, to the, the, the subsystem that allows uh, developers to run a full instance of the Linux kernel uh, directly on their PC, um, do all the things that you would normally have to do on a Linux PC, but right there inside your Windows PC. A um, lot of performance improvements, a lot of reliability improvements in here, uh, a lot of things that developers have been asking for. And, you know, it's, it's really odd to think that one of the biggest sets of changes in a new version of Windows is uh, is all about Linux, but um, here we are in 2020. Uh, and the second one is uh, a feature that was introduced at the end of 2019 called Windows Sandbox. And that's something that allows you to create an instant virtual machine for, uh, for testing a new program um, without having to go through the whole uh, Hyper-V subsystem. And what this allows uh, a, uh, an administrator developer on a machine to do is to create a configuration file so that that Windows sandbox works the way they expect it to. Uh, right now, if you just use the feature out of the box, you get sort of a generic Windows sandbox. And this feature, uh, which takes a little tweaking, uh, but it allows uh, a developer to configure that sandbox to work the way they want it to. Excellent. All right, and, and finally though, uh, you know, for those that our administrators, developers, just everybody else. What does it mean uh, for, for all of those people, the majority, I guess? Yeah, I think that that's the vast majority of people, to be, uh, to be honest. And I think the good news here is that um, most of the changes are fairly subtle. Uh, there are some welcome ones. I think that, that things that people will look forward to for example, in tab performance tab, um, you on the disk drives, you can see the type of disk that you're working with. So that might be a solid state drive or it might be a USB drive. You'll be able to see that directly in Task Manager. If you have a graphics processing unit, a GPU, you'll be able to look at the temperature of that GPU. And that's something that, that uh, gamers will especially appreciate or anybody who does like really demanding tasks with, with their PC. Typically you've had to install a separate utility to see the temperature of the GPU and you know, see if you're overdriving your system. That will be right there in Task Manager. Uh, there's, there's changes in uh, the settings app. Uh, Microsoft has been steadily migrating things from the old style settings to the new settings dialog box over the past couple of years. And one of the most, most noticeable and welcome ones here is a, a sort of consolidation of the settings that are there for your network connection so that you can look at how much data you've used, you can look at your uh, network adapter properties, your IP address, all from a single status page instead of having to jump all over uh, through settings to find those things. Um, there's improvements in notifications, uh, which, are, which are pretty neat. Uh, you can just you know, right click on a notification and say, you know, I don't really want to see notifications from this program anymore. Um, if you use the virtual desktop feature to organize windows so that you can switch between groups of windows instead of having everything on the same desktop, um, you can rename those virtual desktops. And, uh, and last but not least, there's uh, an option now for when you restart and whether that's to install some updates or uh, just because you're having some stability issues, you can tell Windows 10 that uh, when you restart, you want it to open the same programs and files that you currently have open so that after your restart, you can get right back to work right where you were. Um, and that feature now covers not just uh, desktop programs like Microsoft Office, but also the new universal Windows programs like uh, Calendar and Mail and things like that. So that's, what's, that's what people can expect from Windows 10 version 2004 coming soon to a PC very near you. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Ed, well, you were always a joy to talk to. Lots of great information for us as always. And as Ed mentioned, if you want to learn more about Windows 10 version 2004, everything you need to know, check it out in his article there on ZDNet. Thanks for watching.